Hi Knitters, Hannah here from Bears Den Essentials and today we are going to be talking about another step in the How to Knit series. Today's video will talk about casting off, sometimes also called binding off. This is what you do when you've reached the end of your project and you need to take all of the stitches off your needles and do so in a way that you're securing the edge of your work so that it doesn't unravel. There's no need to be intimidated by this last step because it's actually not too different than knitting a simple garter stitch. And by this point, you have a nice long rectangle that you've gotten lots of practice with knitting on. Now, like with casting on and anything else, there's not one specific technique necessarily. There's a whole category of techniques that you can use to finish your last row of knitting. So. What I'm going to be talking about today is the basic or standard bind off method and this is really good for getting started. It's really straightforward. They have other types of bind off that one of them is the Chinese waitress cast off. Another is a sewn bind off method that you can do three needles or an eye cord bind off. I really like the standard bind off method. It's tried and true and it creates a nice finish. Let's get started. So I'm gonna move the finished headband out of the way, which you're one step closer to creating. All that's left after this is to actually sew the two end pieces together. The first step is to actually knit the first two stitches of the row as you would normally. So knit one, knit two. You wanna keep your stitches relatively loose. Make sure you're not knitting too tight because you don't want your bind off to become too tight and create an uneven edge compared to the other side. So to bind off the first stitch, you're going to insert the tip of the left needle into the first knit stitch on the right needle. Next, you're gonna use that needle tip to lift that first stitch over the second stitch and you're gonna let that stitch drop off, that first stitch drop off the needle. You wanna be careful to not drop both stitches off the needle accidentally. You just wanna have one left. So now you have one less stitch. If you have trouble with this motion, you can try sliding the stitches a little bit closer to the tapered tip of the needle where you have a little bit more room to maneuver. But again, you don't want it too close that you'll accidentally pull the stitch off the needle itself. So next step is to repeat. So you're gonna knit the next stitch and your bind off happens when you have two stitches on the right needle. So the stitch that you just work is the one that you're gonna be binding off onto. So you're gonna take the left needle, insert it toward in a toward you motion into the first stitch on the needle you're gonna pull that loop up and over that second stitch without taking the second stitch off. And then you're gonna release that first stitch. Knit another stitch. Insert the left needle into the first stitch towards you. Pull that up and over. I like to use my index finger to stabilize that second stitch so that it doesn't fall off. And then you release that first stitch. So knit, knit the next stitch onto the needle. That first stitch, you pull up and over that second stitch, release that first stitch without dropping the second. And you can see that nice cast off edge starting to form. So you continue to do that across the row, up and over, knit, insert the needle, up and over that second stitch, release, knit, insert, up and over. And I like to keep my hands pretty relaxed in this because it's easy to make it very tight and end up with a very tight cast off edge. You want there to be a little bit of that stretchy squishiness. Again, you don't want it to be distorted so that it's completely different in width from the rest of your project, but you also don't want it to be like a sad frowny face that crinkles the edge like that. So keeping that tension right at 
about where you were knitting the rest of the piece is a good way to help prevent that sad frowny face or the opposite, which is that slouchy wide edge. Ooh, sometimes I get into the flow, as you just saw, and I almost go to continue knitting across the row. So you have to, you have to make sure that it's always going to be two stitches onto the right needle, decreasing to one before you proceed. Last stitch. So when this happens, you take your former left hand needle, you put it to the side. And this is where an embroidery needle comes in handy. I have just a simple one that I think I've had forever. And the other thing that I need is scissors. So my pattern states for this headband to cut about 20 inches. You can measure that exactly, or you can do what I do, which is I just eyeball it. I'm sure that's more than 20 inches, but I always like leaving a little bit extra. I love this clover yarn cutter because I can actually take it with me on planes. I've never had them give me a hard time with it, but I have had scissors confiscated. And so this is one of my favorite little tools and you just go like that to cut the yarn with it. So now again, we have a very long strand of yarn, probably more so than we'll actually need to seam it, but I like having a little bit of a buffer. So you just thread this through and the final stitch is as simple as taking the needle and you put it through the loop. And you can take your knitting needle out and you just secure it. You can secure the end. Since we're gonna be creating that lovely twist for the headband, I'm not gonna weave in the ends, but if I were, all I would do was actually take the needle and I follow the stitch. So I'll show you what that looks like. So everybody has a different way of going about weaving in their ends. I simply just follow what the stitch is doing. So I, I know that the this previous stitch is gonna go up through here in this kind of oxbow shape. So I would just go like that. And I'd follow the yarn. For just a couple stitches. And that creates a nice invisible way of weaving in the end. All right, knitters. So that is how you bind off. You've got a nice bind off that's good and stretchy and you can match it perfectly to your other edge. In the next video, I'll show you how to create that twist so that the headband can look complete. In the meantime, continue to practice all of these techniques in the videos leading up to the final one, which is sewing the twist. And that way you can get more and more comfortable with some of the foundational techniques of knitting. We will do videos on purling as well as things like increasing and decreasing in future videos, but for now, focus on getting your cast on down, garter stitch, troubleshooting, and casting off like this. And you can also always leave me a note in the comment section with video requests or questions, and you can feel free to email us anytime at bearsdenessentials at gmail.com for video requests, questions, and anything else that you would like to know. Thanks again for joining me today.